Okay, so Charlemagne, I, mean, I think I've I've got a better um, way to articulate what I'm trying to say here about the problem with using the autumnal equinox as the beginning of um, Rosh Hashanah. The um, document in front of you is something I've got on the web. It's called passplot.htm where I talk about the beginning. Uh, tell me my mouse isn't going to be yeah, messed up. The, the calendar names of the Jewish months. Okay, I'll put a link to it in the video description. All right, I'm I cre created this after noticing that there's a deliberate parallel in the dates of the holidays, designed to show that they conform um, to bifurcate the calendar, which of course we already know because the civil calendar is starting on the right hand side in Itanim, which today is called Tishri versus Aviv, which today is called Nisan, okay, on the left, all right, and when I noticed that difference, that was when this business about the 30 days really kind of solidified in my mind. See, look here, the Day of Atonement is the 10th, okay, the Lamb is set aside on the 10th of Aviv, you know that, that parallels Christ being arrested. But the calendar was running four days fast that year, hadn't been intercalated properly. That's how come he could be three days and three nights in the grave rather than seven days and seven nights in the grave, which is Matthew 20, um, I want to say 40 through 41. Okay, so the 10th day you set aside the lamb and you didn't kill it until the 14th at sunset, at sunset because that's when the day ends and you're reclining at table by that point okay which is the technically when the 15th begins okay so that the feast of unleavened bread on the solar day of the 15th technically the 15th solar day of the 14th but at sunset it becomes the 15th until the 21st at sunset is the Passover. The first fruits begins at sunset on the solar day of the 21st, okay, which is really the 22nd in Jewish time, at sunset. In other words, the day change is over. All right, so notice this. You got booths that's running, Sukkot, that's running the 15th through the 21st also. All right, so very clearly God intended the 10th Day of Atonement to correspond to the setting aside of the Lamb on the 10th here. And Passover, which begins at sunset on the 14th, which is really the 15th, to last until the 21st, he means that to correspond here. So you can't have 186 days between the two events. You can only have 180. The month has to begin. Itanim has to begin on the 181st day of the calendar or this parallel will not exist. Okay, it won't exist. The month actually has to start. Itanim has to start on the 181st day, not the 187th day. You see why? So Rosh Hashanah has to begin on the 181st day. There's just no two ways about it. Now that's not the only um, important issue here to notice. I just want to make sure I'm recording. Okay, that's the first the first thing. It, it's a math thing. Here's the math of the calendar. Here are the days of the feast. They are obviously designed to parallel each other. And that, of course, is why the civil calendar begins at Rosh Hashanah, but the sacred calendar begins at the beginning of Aviv, a.k.a. Nisan today. Now think about this. Look at this parallel. 
with the equinox, the role of the equinox then becomes different. Rosh Hashanah then is always occurring seven days before the equinox, the autumnal equinox. It will always occur seven days before the autumnal equinox. As a result, because of that difference, booths will always end 14 days after the autumnal equinox. 14 days after the vernal equinox is when you kill the lamb, when Christ was killed. He was killed on what should have been Passover, but because the Jewish calendar was wrong by that time, he celebrated the Passover on what was really the 10th. I'm pretty sure you accept that. In the Greek of John 19, John makes fun of this fact using paraskoi for preparation. In other words, the preparation that was officially celebrated was four days too early because they didn't enter Cali properly. And the day he actually ends up dying is on what should have been the day of preparation because he dies, you know, by 3 p.m. when the, the final shofar for the day was blown. Okay. So, this parallel with the equinox, then, becomes extremely meaningful. See, the 21st, right here, is really occurring 14 days after the autumnal equinox. Now, why is that so pregnant? Because Israel is beyond her time. This is one thing that Christians aren't understanding. They don't understand that the whole idea of the, the tribulation being kicking off, you know, the rapture kicking off the tribulation, the reason they don't understand it is they don't understand that Israel was on a timeline. Even the dispensationalists don't understand that. They don't know about what you would call the 2000 and the 2000, you know, age of desolation, age of Torah. They don't know about that. They didn't pay attention to that. But the Bible pays a great deal of attention to it, and it's actually 2100 and 2100 years. The problem being that Abraham matured 53.5 years early. So the second 2100 started 53.5 years early, and that's why you got that 50 year gap in Daniel 926, between Daniel 926 and 27. The 27, Daniel 9, 27 begins the tribulation. Okay, well, there's a gap then of seven years corresponding to the seven-day drift. I mean, it's really six, six, seven, depends on how you want to count it. You see what I'm talking about? You're talking about the autumnal equinox beginning, you know, starting 186 days after the vernal equinox. Yeah, I'm saying there's a reason for it. The reason is to depict the tribulation. I mean, I'm, I'm assuming that they counted the autumnal versus, um, you know, vernal equinox the same way as we're counting it now, 186 days, because of the rotation. That's not too hard to figure out even in the ancient times. They knew about that stuff. But why is it that number of days instead of 180 days. God could have made it be 180 days. Because the last half of the travel, you know, the, the Tekufat, the last half is 180 days. Why isn't the first half? Because there's a gap. See, look. See, I maintain, and I don't think I'm alone in this, I maintain that Israel's annual calendar is the calendar of history. And I know that there are a lot of Jews who believe in that too. Okay, so a whole lot of Jews are expecting the second advent to come here at Rosh Hashanah. Okay, but if Rosh Hashanah predates by seven days, then that would be the start of the tribulation. And of course, there are a lot of Jews today who are Messianics who say that, you know, the tribulation should start at Rosh Hashanah too. 
this whole idea of balance into the calendar, to Israel's calendar, which I agree with. That makes a lot of sense. Whether it'll actually happen is another story, but that it would be planned or intended, that makes sense too. Because remember, man has free will, and you know, now in this common era, we can, <clears throat> you know, we, the Bible calls that term church, and we can change our mind. You might want to call it synagogue, but the actual Greek term is ecclesia, and it means the same thing. But anyway, the point is any congregation, all right? So now that we got this congregation thing going, it could be that the rapture occurs on what would be the day before Rosh Hashanah. All right, but it's seven years, seven days, seven years, see the parallel, early. Because there's this big gap in the, in the calendar right here, okay? Your last feast is Pentecost, all right? Which on a 30-day calendar is occurring 10th, 11th, 12th, depending on drift with the vernal equinox of Sivan, all right? There's a dead spot here with Av. All right, there's a dead spot in Elul. There's no holidays. The next holiday is Rosh Hashanah, which if like most people, the most Jews that I know who are Messianics anyway, regard that as, um, you know, the second advent. Okay, the second advent would be the anniversary of the beginning of the tribulation on the people who want to try to tally the calendar, which makes a lot of sense why that would happen okay we don't know what year it's going to be so it's still we can't predict the rapture all right and we also because their calendars are so screwed up we really don't we really can't say when Rosh Hashanah is but if you want to try to use the equinoxes to tally it then Rosh Hashanah should begin seven days before the equinox which it would on a 30 day you know 30 month 30-day per month calendar. It would. And it would still be evocative of the seven years before he comes back. And he still would be inaugurating either, either one on a Rosh Hashanah. So if you were expecting the rapture, which we shouldn't be dating it because you can die tomorrow anyhow. So be more concerned about how you're growing up in Christ. But the, the main point is that Rosh Hashanah would start and terminate that seven year period which is agreeing with a 30 day month such that Rosh Hashanah is occurring um, at the beginning of the period and the end of it is also a Rosh Hashanah which would begin the millennium okay right and Therefore, this the fact that Booth's ends, I mean, Booth's always signified Israel's time in the wilderness. It ends, meaning that Israel's time in the wilderness is over. She's going to be queen of the nations, la di la We all know that story. Okay, but that times perfectly with the end of Booth's. So it times perfectly with Rosh Hashanah, if Rosh Hashanah begins seven days prior to the autumnal equinox. And it times perfectly with the end of Booth, again, if Rosh Hashanah begins seven days prior to the autumnal equinox. So the first six months is 30 days. And you catch up the last five days right here at Adar. There's no Adar Sheni. That's a big, you know, like you proved in your video, that's a big, you know, invention. There was never an Adar Sheni. There's one Adar. It's either 30 days or 35 or 36 days. I mean, it's either 35 or 36 days, depending on, you know, whether you're going to round up. This way, all the priestly courses, which are based on a 24-hour day, they work really well because, especially if the priests are going by hours, because um, you had 7.5 days of service, which is really equating to 7.6 if you're going by hours. And then each priestly course, there are going to be four of them, per month because that's 30 days all right and that's you know plus four you know 7.5 times four and then you have to add point one because there's this drift you know at the end of the second month you've got 0.83 days 
that you got a drift. So if they're counting by hours when they relieve each other at temple, all right, then this drift will be taken care of, but it would still be, as far as the calendar is concerned, a 30-day month because you've only got a 0.43 day drift here. And it would still be considered like the first of, by the time Tammuz ends, it would still be considered, you know, on the first day of Tammuz, but you've got a full day drift at that point. 0.43 every, you know, every month. You got a 0.43 drift by the end of Abib. A second 0.43 drift that's 5.25 days divided by 12. The second um, drift at Ziv. So now you got a full day, but it's still the first of Ziv. Okay. And they're relieving themselves based on the hours. So that the priestly course, each priest ends up serving 365.25 hours during the whole year. So they could never be off, even by hours they would get the time right, which was the priest's job, was to get the timing right. Okay? So the, the basis, to sum up quickly, this is your key right here, is the days of the month versus the days of the month here. And the fact that there's the seven-year tribulation, which makes sense, if Rosh Hashanah is beginning seven days prior to the autumnal equinox, such that at the end of Booths, the seven years would have been up. You see the parallel? Israel comes out of the wilderness, just like Sukkot was supposed to mean. At the end of, you see how it ties? And again, you got this dead spot here from Pentecost to Rosh Hashanah. You got no holidays. They're only bunched up here. And they head off they head up Rosh head, you know, that's cute. They head up the calendar in both cases. So that's why the civil calendar was adopted for here. Of course that goes back to the flood also. And why the sacred calendar, well, I maintain that Noah was actually born on Passover. But that's why the Passover is, you know, tied the way it is. And this is paralleling it. Especially right here. Lamb set aside. Anyway, let me know what your thoughts are. This is why I'm maintaining that Rosh Hashanah is actually beginning on the 181st day of the year. It's got a prophetic meaning. We all know it's got a prophetic meaning. We're just kind of talking about the details. This is why I think those details are correct. Signing off.